Michael Lang here, Lang Productions. Uh, today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the NDI Discovery Server, uh, what it is, how to use it, and why it will make your life a whole lot easier when deploying resources in the cloud, especially with NDI, hence the name NDI Discovery Server. So let's dive right into it, find out what it is, how to get it, and how to set it up. So I'm going to hop over to my screen here. First thing you need to do is you need to go here to ndi.tv slash tools. This will get you the latest NDI tools, which are free. You're going to need them uh, as part of this tutorial. So scroll down a little bit, click that download button, and go grab the NDI tools for your platform. Yes, they will ask for an email address, but that's okay. Um, you're going to be using NDI a lot. You're probably going to want to know the latest and greatest stuff about what's going on with NDI tools. The next thing you're going to need, you're going to need two different software packages. You're going to have to hop over and grab the NDI SDK as well. This is at ndi.tv slash SDK. So scroll down here, click the download button, and what you want is this one right here, the software developer kit. You want to download and install that. So once you have both of those packages installed, we can start uh, the magic. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the SDK files. So there is a nice shortcut. Just type SDK in Windows or uh, in the Windows Start menu. Go to your SDK files. There's something similar on Mac, so you can go find it. This is in Program Files, NDI, NDI5, SDK. And what we're looking for is uh, in the bin, the binary folder. We want to go to Utilities x64 because everybody's on a 64-bit platform now or at least you should be if you're going to do anything like ndi um, and what we're looking for is the new tech ndi discovery service so double click that and it'll launch a console program and that's it it's an extremely lightweight program it uses almost no resources and uh, you can just leave it running at all times in the background um, if you want to get really fancy which i would recommend um, have it run automatically on startup uh, using uh, Windows T Task Scheduler or um, the uh, script on Mac to make that happen. So right now it's listening on port 5959 for all of these um, for all of these sources, and I don't have any NDI sources right now. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to tell this machine to use this discovery server. You're running on the same machine for example purposes ideally you would probably not run these on the same machine you could run the discovery service on an intel NUC or any super lightweight uh, compute platform like i said it takes almost no resources um, what we need to do is go into access manager so i'm going to just type access manager this is the ndi access manager from the ndi tools package we installed earlier click that put it over to this machine here and there's a few tabs we're going to leave all of this uh, to the default settings. The only thing we need to change, we need to go to Advanced, check Discovery Servers, and we're going to type the IP address of the machine this Discovery Server is running on. In my case, it's the localhost 127.0.0.1, and then click OK. Now, any NDI applications that are already open will not process that change until you restart them. So if you've got the, an app already open, go ahead and restart it. Now I'm going to create an NDI source. The easiest way to do that for testing is to use the Test Patterns app. So I'm going to fire that up. Here's my lovely NDI test patterns. And there you can see, as soon as I fired up the app, the discovery server found that source. So there it is. Now finally, to test all this out and make sure that NDI is indeed flowing, through all your applications, I'm going to go open Studio Monitor, which is another application from the NDI Tools package. It's free, and you'll end up using it a lot to verify sources. And there is my test pattern right here. I can right-click, look at my sources. I've got a, a source here coming from NDI Remote. We'll get into that in another tutorial. But there is my test pattern, and it has beautiful bars and audio. So. That's it. That's all there is to running the discovery server. It'll allow you to discover sources without having to allow MDNS or multicast on your network, 
which is very handy in the cloud. It's configuring multicast can be uh, very difficult and not necessary because you have the bandwidth you need unless you have thousands of sources, then you, that might be different. Um, but that's it. Any machine that points to that discovery server will be able to instantly see the sources coming from any other machine as long as they can communicate on the network. And that includes across subnets as long as there's an open route. Don't try it over the internet, though. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. That's a quick explanation of the NDI 5 Discovery Server uh, free with the NDI 5 SDK.